Uh, so this is joint work with uh, Professor Ishai Yaffe from uh, the Hebrew University, from the uh, business school. And uh, I hate to tell you that, but I'm going to mention once more MFW. Uh, but that's going to be the last slide where it is uh, mentioned, or at least uh, implicitly mentioned. Uh, the paper that I'm going to talk about, it's not a paper yet, it's really research that's in the works and uh, we have some preliminary results that we want that I want to share with you today but uh, there will be more results as we have more data is relevant it's a it's a paper it's a res research project on Israel but it's very relevant uh, in other countries as well we heard a lot today about MFW and one of the elements of MFW is uh, that the minority shareholders sign off on a transaction that involves a conflict of interest between the controlling shareholder and the minority shareholders. Um, this is a, mm, it's not mandatory in the United States to obtain this shareholder approval, but uh, Delaware law says that if you volunteer to obtain this approval, you may get some reward for that, and the question is whether the reward is gonna get more people to do it. Well, in Canada, there is a statute that actually requires uh, minority shareholder approval for some types of uh, related party transactions, only business combination uh, transactions. Um, but there has been no study that empirically tested so far the effectiveness of this shareholder approval, uh, either in the United States or in Canada, perhaps because in the United States it's new and it's not mandatory, so it's there, you know, in econometrics you're going to run into a, an endogeneity problem. People who obtain the approval are the ones for which it's easier to obtain the approval. And in Canada, it is a universal rule, so you have no control group to compare to. There is nothing uh, you can compare these transactions to. But in Israel, as I will show you shortly, we have a control group. Now, all this relates also to Seyon Pay, a very re a recent phenomenon all over the world. It's becoming very popular. Many countries are nowadays requiring some sort of shareholder vote on uh, executive compensation. Again, a decision that involves a conflict of interest. Uh, in most countries, it is advisory vote, but in some countries, for example, England since, 90, since 2013, it's a binding vote, and the European Union, the European Commission is in, uh, considering, in fact, rolled out a, a bill to make it binding also all over Europe. Um, now, there have been some studies of shareholder voting on pay, on co executive compensation. Uh, mm, they have found some uh, qualified, not robust results. It depends on the sample, that uh, looks at, uh, it depends on the groups that they're looking at. But basically what they have found in different countries, all these uh, studies on the, on the board are related to the United States and the United Kingdom is that shareholder voting on executive compensation is welcomed by the market. The market likes it. Stock market, stock price increases. And it can have some effect on compensation. Keep in mind that all these studies have, done, have been done on non-binding shareholder votes. And these are not majority of the minority approval. This is just shareholder voting, whether or not there is a controlling shareholder. Now, in Israel, Actually, the law since uh, the 1990s has been perhaps more advanced in protecting minority shareholders using, share, uh, uh, using their uh, voting rights. Since the 1990s, certain types of corporate decisions were subject to uh, shareholder approval, which required a third of the minority shareholders, at least, to be supportive. So related party transactions, uh, the CEO's dual appointment as both the CEO and the chair of the board required this approval. Uh, the appointment of two outside directors needs to be supported by the, uh, by, the indip by, the, sorry, by the minority shareholders. There has been one study that I'm not aware of that uh, my co-author and Asaf have done uh, looking at uh, the results of these votes, finding some evidence that this is helpful, but keep in mind that the majority that the support that was needed up until this point was one third of the minority shareholders. And that, according to uh, Asaf and Ishai, wasn't very effective. That was also the consensus in the market. 
And uh, in fact, I think Zohar uh, has the credit of, uh, uh, deserves the credit of uh, pushing forward a, a reform that would increase the voting requirement to one half of the minority shareholders. And this is what happened in 2011. The law was changed in Israel. And from now on, controlling shareholder transactions and all the votes that I mentioned in the slide before now require the support of one half of the minority shareholders. Not only that, when it comes to controlling shareholder transactions, you need to refresh this approval. You have to get a new one every three years. You don't have a, an evergreen approval that's good for life. You have to get new approval every three years. And interestingly, it applies not only to business combinations, but also to executive compensation if the executive happens to be a controlling shareholder or a relative of this controlling shareholder. And I'll already tell you that as a matter of fact, one third of the executives in the Israeli public companies on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange are controlling shareholders or their relatives. So we're talking about a large group. So what we try to do in this uh, project is to compare, to see if the law has made any difference. And so we're trying to compare the before and after, what happened to the executive compensation of these people that were subject to this new requirement, and compare that change to the change, if any, in the compensation of other executives who are not subject to this new requirement. So we have a treatment group or a study group that we're focusing on. These are the controlling shareholders or relatives who are executives, who are subject to this approval requirement. And then in the other bucket, we have everybody else, either non-controlling shareholders who happen to be executives, or, I mean, they, they may not even have, be shareholders at all, uh, or they can be executives who are controlling shareholders but still have a few, a couple of years left until they need to get their approval because we have to get this approval every three years. I'm going to tell you right now what our main results from the data that we collected so far are. So the main results are that when you look at any different, we have different kinds of approvals for compensation. If it's just any director, you need a simple majority, basically controlled by the controlling shareholder. If it's an executive who's not a director, you need the board approval for the compensation. If it's an executive who is also a controlling shareholder, up until 2011, you needed one third of the minority shareholders to support it. Now you need one half of the minority shareholders to support it. We compared the effects of all these approvals. We found that all of them are associated with an increase in compensation, except for this new majority of minority approval. Which makes sense, because why would a company put to a vote or get approval for compensation other than because it wants to raise the salary? That's why the company initiates the approval process. But now, for the first time, the company has to put this for a vote. And not only that, it has to get a majority of the minority. The effect seems to be more pronounced in the Tel Aviv 100 list, basically the largest companies on the market. And we uh, assume what we are going to test later on, whether this, is result, whether this result is driven by the higher exposure, higher publicity, higher visibility of those companies that get reported on in the newspapers every day, or it's because of the shareholder mix, perhaps more institutional investors in general, perhaps more foreign investors who uh, uh, drive these results. So, so far we have about 450 firms in our uh, sample, 4,200 observations, uh, a little over 2,000 executives, and we have 2010 to 2012. We're still working on collecting 2013 and 2009. We're going to have this probably in a month or so. Uh, I'll skip this slide to save time, uh, and I'll skip this one too, but I'm going to give you the punchline. So what we see here is uh, that um, well, this we have, all the, the, what this slide says is that the results that we find so far may be actually underestimating the true result because some of the executives in our sample perhaps didn't get the approval they needed and then they didn't get any money at all 
and then they s drop out of our uh, sample. So this is underestimating the effect. So far, we haven't so found too many of those, but we'll check this more carefully later on. Um, an interesting result is the comparison between two types of majority of minority approvals, those that we call compulsory and those that we call voluntary. Of course, both of all of those approvals are compulsory, but if you have to get the approval every three years and you still have time, you can do it next year, and you say, no, no, I don't want to wait for next year, I'm going to do it this year, we call it voluntary. Only if you get the approval in the very year that you must obtain it, we call it compulsory. And when we distinguish between these two classes of approvals, we find that only the compulsory approvals, the ones that were gotten, that have, that have been obtained in the last minute, only those drive the results, which makes sense. So if the company wants to raise the CEO salary, and they say they have now an excuse. Look, our regulator tells us that we have to put this to a vote. What can we do? Ah, and by the way, we're going to raise the salary. And that's fine. They don't draw too much attention. However, if they wait until the last minute, we are more certain that this is really an exogenous effect, something that they really forced, kind of dragged, kicking and screaming to doing to get this approval. Okay, so the Tel Aviv... 100 firms, as I said, we find not only a stop in the increase of compensation, but also a drop in the compensation. But this effect is not very robust. It's driven by a small number of observations. We hope that once we have the 2009 and 2010 and 13 observations, we'll have uh, perhaps more robust results there. Um, the effect, the moderating effect of compulsory approvals seems to be robust. We get it pretty much in all uh, specifications. And now, of course, an interesting question is what's driving the effect? Is it the fact that you have to get a majority of the minority? Or is it the fact that you must do it every three years on the, every three years on the clock and you can't just time the approval to the day when it's opportune and you have high profits and you can go to your shareholders and say, look guys, I have a really good year, why don't we uh, reward our executives generously? Because now, if it's a good year or a bad year, you have to get the approval anyway. Um, and of course, it's interesting to see why the Tel Aviv 100 firms uh, are, are more, um, have a more pronounced effect. Now, this, what you have in the slide, is our to-do list for the next couple of months. So we're going to get 2013, 2009. Another point that we think is interesting in the Israeli market, we have a lot of so-called pyramids, corporate groups where one company that's publicly traded controls another company that's publicly traded, and maybe you have two or more uh, or, 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 or layers of those publicly traded controlled companies. In those companies, it's very often to find the same controlling shareholders in different layers. And so it's hard to, dis to distinguish how much they get in each layer, and we're going to separate all these out during the summer. It's a lot of work, actually, but I think it's going to pay out. Uh, another point that we want to pay attention to is retroactive approvals. Those approvals can happen because you tried to get your shareholders to approve your compensation, they were not cooperating. And then you wait for a couple of months, maybe you negotiate a little, a little bit either with the constitutional investors or with the proxy advisors, and then you bring it again to a vote. And then you get the approval, but you get it retroactively. Of course, that's the fact that we haven't taken this into account so far basically ca causes, kind of stacks the deck against us finding anything because some of the approvals, we get them in the year 2013, but they actually affect the salary already back from 2012. So once we clean that, we hope to get stronger results. Another interesting point that we haven't focused on yet is the voting recommendations by the proxy advisory firms, uh, and in more generally, the institutional investors holdings, we would like to see whether their presence can affect the, uh, the efficacy of the approval requirement. And finally, we would like to get uh, revised and failed pay proposals 
because we believe that that's where we will find all the interesting stories. So that's it. Now, uh, we do have more data to collect and more star experiments to run here, more tests to run here, so uh, I'd love to have questions if you have any for me, or proposals or suggestions. When, when you talked about the US and, and the fact that uh, when uh, stockholders approve salaries, then uh, stock uh, prices seem to go up, is it maybe it's the other way around when stock prices go up? The studies showing the positive stock price reaction were the, 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 stock, the positive reaction was to the actual legislation. So when the law was enacted and everybody knew that this, this is going to happen, then the companies that were more susceptible, that were more, more likely to be influenced by this legislation, they are the ones that exhibit the stock return. Yes, yes, because, uh, because later it's old, it's, it's old news. Everybody knows it, yeah. So you always look for stock price reaction to some surprise, some new information. All right. Last word, Joel. Thank you very much. Um, thank you all for coming, and I would like to have great thanks to Ayala Reshef and to Judy Arad, who helped us a lot in organizing this conference. As you know, normally there are some other people who are doing the hard work. And this time, to Ayala and Judy. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoyed. Okay.